be to God in the eyes. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. You are welcome to uh, another session, another class, another day. It's a day that the Lord has made. Can you hear me? Can I have a confirmation that you can hear me? Hallelujah. Can I have a confirmation yes, sir. you can hear me loud and clear? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Amen. Glory, 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 glory be to God. <clears throat> it's good to be back uh, in class as it were. Yes, it sir. was just a beautiful, beautiful day last week when we concluded on the blessings of the covenant. And we are starting a new one today. And I know that without any doubt, the Lord is already here to bless us tremendously. Let us go ahead and give God the glory. Let us appreciate God for who God is, for what God is in our life. It is the I am that I am is the one that ruleth in the affairs of men. Father, we bless your holy name. We appreciate you. We honor you. You are God from beginning to the end. Our Lord, our God, thank you. Thank you for bringing us back to class. Thank you for what you alone have planned to do as a result of this teaching. Thank you for our Father in the Lord, our your Son, that you have prepared to take us into a time of uh, prayer, a time of teaching, a time of warfare. Father, we just want to bless all your holy name. Thank you for those that are coming in that are, are, are just of two mind and those that already are. We thank you for those that are on Facebook that are joining us. We worship you. We thank you for, for one reason or the other they are unable to join and they are thinking oh I will catch up with them but I thank you because this is your doing and it is so so marvelous in our sight father we appreciate you you are God from the beginning to the end we thank you mighty father we adore you we appreciate you without you we are nobody we are nothing thank you for being our God thank you for being our Lord Thank you for today. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for impartation. Thank you for the call into the ministry. Thank you most especially for this week, the Easter week or the Passion week, for we know that it is not in vain. Your coming to come and save us, to come and deliver us, to come and set us free, it is not in vain. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Who is there like unto thee? No one at all. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, we have prayed, and the people of the Lord say, Amen. Amen. You are welcome to um, a new day, a new beginning of our lecture. And I pray that you will prepare yourself, you will have your pen, you will have your paper, you will take notes as much as you can. And I know that as you do so, the Lord will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Before we go further, uh, or before I bring our Father in the Lord, I want us to know that without any doubt, we are here to receive at the feet of our Lord. And the Lord will bless all of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, 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 amen somebody. We are going to quickly pray uh, for those that um, request our prayers as we are. You know, we are a church that believe in praying. We are family that believe in praying. We are family that we know that without prayer, we cannot achieve anything. And that is why we are going to quickly pray uh, for people that are requesting prayer. Uh, there's a prayer that said, God should end my struggle and bring a refreshing time. It should take me to a new haven of rest. That is one of the prayer points. I will quickly, let me see if I can share it. I will share the prayer point so that we can all unmute ourselves and just pray let us pray yes thank god for that so we are going to pray for uh the prayer point number one that god should end struggles in my life and bring a refreshing time it should take me it should take him or out to a <coughs> of rest a again another uh brother said i need spirit divine intervention on my matter financially and maritally the lord should by his mercy send helps to bring me out of my financial mess help me fulfill destiny and give me we are going to pray and the last one is pray for one of our ministry partner who is sick and in coma that the lord will restore let's go ahead and just lift all this prayer up on top let us lift it up let us bring it up to the most high whenever we gather together this is one of the things that god will permit us to do 
pray for everyone that needs prayer. Go ahead and just and just and just, and just pray. Say a word of prayer. You may not know them. You may not know the children. Be say a word of prayer. The rod of rod the rod of struggling shall come into the name of Jesus. Thank you, Master. God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus and God, we pray in the divine intervention financially and maritally. Jehovah God, that the reward should not be disgraced in the name of Jesus. You will arise and help in the name we have prayed. Amen. I just request the um, Pastor Emeka to please round off us in this prayer as we move swiftly. I don't want this to um, disturb us. Pastor Emeka, please. Father, we are grateful tonight. We worship you because of who you are. We thank you for your loving kindness, your tender mercies, your faith, for this forum that you have created, an atmosphere where the impossible becomes possible, where divine encounters change the destinies of men and women and help them to walk in the course that have ordained concerning their lives. Mm -hmm. And so whatever has served as an impediment, as an obstacle in the lives of your people, in the area of their finances, we do call upon you today because your words are which above all things that you prosper and be in health. Jehovah, we demand tonight that you will intervene on the behalf of these people. Let this yoke, let this bondage, let this enslavement, let this captivity of hell break in the name of Jesus. Amen. By fire of the Holy Ghost, we destroy whatever is holding back their finances in the name mm. of Jesus. And now we open up the three gates and the three doors. Lift up your heads, O ye gate, and be lifted up your everlasting doors. And the King of Glory shall come in. Now let the King of Glory come in, ushering a new season of wealth, of prosperity. Everyone under the sound of my voice, going through any financial challenges tonight, it's over in the name of Jesus. We come upon the grace of God that's upon this this altar tonight and we release them into their destinies of financial emancipation and prosperity and increase in jesus mighty name we have declared amen. amen amen and amen in jesus name thank you so much man of god yes, we yes, celebrate sir. the grace of god over your life we thank move you, swiftly we want to pray concerning our project if you are part of this family, you know that there is a project that we have been talking about. And every time that we had the opportunity to come online, we've been sharing, we've been discussing about building together. And just for you to know that uh, the second phase or this phase is supposed to have started on the 1st of February. Uh, and the estimated cost is 24 million, 58,000 US dollar, 43,000 um, pounds sterling. And uh, this is the gallery where the offices and the meeting rooms will be. That is the area where we are waiting. Or oh, we've already started, but we just waited that by the grace of God, the Lord will help us to move swiftly so that this will be uh, a reality. Amen. For some of us, we might be looking at it that I don't have money, but I have materials that I can give. These are the part of the material that is being displayed at the moment. Please get in touch with us. Talk to any of us, myself, Pastor Wale, our Father and the Lord, Reverend Mrs. Amuso. We will tell you how you can get involved. And no amount is too small. No, please don't say that what I have is too small. No, no amount is too small. A little there, a little here, we make all these projects become a reality. And we are going to pray. This is where we are currently. You can see where we are. Currently, uh, we are 8.5 million out of 24 million that we need for the next phase. So we have uh, 
recommence work. The work is going on on site, but we are praying that this work will not stop by the grace of God. Please let us lift this project up. I want you to pray from the bottom of your heart that Lord, you will move swiftly concerning this project. Please go ahead and pray. Let's pray for this gallery that this phase two will be completed to record time in the mighty name of Jesus. Please go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Unmute yourself. I want to hear your voice. I want us to cry. The Bible says, can a woman neglect the cry of the child? Let us labor in prayer over this project. Let us labor in prayer that God Almighty, oh, we move swiftly, we accept us, God Almighty, we raise divine assistance, God divine help for us, concerning the gallery offices and the home, which is the next thing that we are working on at the moment, the morning will not stop this project, the morning will not stop our telling step, in the mighty name of Jesus, please go ahead and pray, and pray, 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 God, that money will not be an issue concerning this project to God. The Bible says that we are not on the basis of faith. 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 Father, arise into the Shekinah glory. Go to the project to God. 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 Father, we bless you all in the way. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. In your closet for this project, and please continue to share it. Do not say that uh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't concern you. This is a project that we are going to be able to make it a training ground for missionary, for warfare, for worship. A training ground where we will develop leaders for tomorrow. So it's a training ground that is going to be a church that is open to everybody. It's not a personalized project, but make it your own project. And as you do so, you will see the hand of God over your finances, over your life, over your home over your family, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for praying. Hallelujah. And we know that without any doubt, we will testify. Amen. Amen. We are getting there Amen. gradually to the time where we are going to bring our Father and the Lord. But before then, we need to take what I call, what we call our prophetic declaration for year 2022. Prophetic declaration for year 2022. And you know, many a times when a church have a declaration the member of the church that does not know what it means will be thinking it's a common thing it is not a common thing if you see the wordings of this declaration and you are making a persona making a pronouncement over your life for your family you will see the hand of god and by the time we are looking at that the first day of year to, uh, December of year 2022, you will look back and say, of the truth, I believe in that prophetic declaration and it worked for me. So I will really appreciate if you put your mind to it, don't read it in your lips, put your heart to it, put your mind to it, believe that every word that you are declaring tonight, the Lord will use it for you and your family in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us read, read it together. Hallelujah. We read it together as we are going. Amen. This is the year the Father of Light has made. The year intentionally made for my good success. I I joyfully submit and willingly embrace the Lord plan for my life. Glory to the Most High. I am an ambassador of favor. So the promises of David. From nothing valuable to something invaluable, from rejection to be fully accepted and beloved. Now, the case of condemnation and limitation against me is closed forever. There remains no excuse for my great success. 
I am alive by the dying power of the spirit of life. The resurrection and the life of my mortal body. The spirit of Christ empowers my soul unto excellent success. The flesh has no pain in my life anymore. Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus lives his life in me to the glory of the, glory of the Father. Of the Father. Not Nothing in the world in the can wall, diminish his love in me. I am an I'm aroma of Christ commissioned to save the lost world. If the fragrance of life to show forth the praise, the praise of, the of the Almighty, Almighty. I am a privileged, privileged partner, partner of his endless triumph. Yes. yes. I yeah, am a definition of excellent success, 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 success to the glory of God, of God, God, God the Father, Father, and of the and Son, of the Son and, and of the Holy Spirit, 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 Go ahead and pray. Just go ahead and pray. I want you to pray in your spirit, your language, your spiritual language. Use that as a prayer point. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Decry it. I want you to mean it. I want you to say it personally. I want you to personalize it to yourself, to your family. Personalize those words. Even if you don't remember it, that is why you are paying the spirit because you don't remember every word. So go ahead and declare and declare the Father le kutu kasanda le kalipuro re kutu kasakata kaya gele gele kumu kumu re kata kaya kumu kumu re kusi kosi sabi silence concerning my home concerning my project concerning my church Jesus Pamino in the mighty name of Jesus please go ahead and pray please go ahead and pray. Please go ahead and pray. Declare it, decree it. Oh, thank you, our Lord, our God. Oh, we worship you. We adore you. Oh, thank you, mighty Father. To you be glory. To you be honor. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name we pray. And the people of God say, Amen. amen. Come on, let's have a resounding amen like somebody that believes. Amen. amen. As you have said, so the Lord will answer you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We continue swiftly because of our time. We want to quickly look into our declaration. Sorry. We want to look into our anchor scripture. Amen. Anchor scripture. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want you to repeat and then we pray. So we prepare this to bring our father in the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, the Lord, I will not, I will not see, see wind, wind nor rain, rain but my valley shall be filled with water, water, and I will and have, have plenty, plenty for myself and my household household in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Declare that into a prayer again. Declare it in prayer. There's nothing wrong in us praying it and say, Father, oh, yes, according Lord. to your word, in oh, in 2 Kings Jesus. chapter 3, verse 17, I will not see me nor rain, but my valley <laughs> shall be filled with water. I will have plenty for the myself and my house in the, name in the mighty name of, name of Jesus. I will in your decree and I declare that struggle comes to me in my life in the mighty name of Jesus. I will not struggle. My family will not struggle. In my home, I will not struggle. Struggle comes to my as a result of this declaration in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Lord, our God. Blessed, blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name we pray. And the people of the Lord say, Amen. Thank you. Thank you for praying, everybody. The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. The word, your word that you have decreed today, it will go to his hearing and it will do unto you as you have said and desire in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Without Amen. wasting much of our time, this is the hour that we have been waiting for. I believe that without any doubt, we enjoy the covenant blessing. And I'm excited. I'm looking forward to bring our Father in the Lord Apostle Victor Amoson to this virtual meeting now to take over. If you want to jam your hands together, please jam it together. If you want to use your reaction button, go ahead and do so. The Lord bless you as you honor the man of God. Daddy, you are welcome. We celebrate the grace, sir. Amen. Thank you very much. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Another session, another time in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, my dear wife, for celebrating grace upon my life. We've been coming together for 
30, over 35 years now, and we're still going on in this assignment. And I thank every other person that has uh, indicated in one form or the other. Right. Um, we are starting a new series as it has been announced to us. And then um, I want to bless the name of the Lord for the grace that he has given to us to start this new series by the grace of God. And then um, I believe God that Jehovah God will help us and we will do all that he wants us to do in this series in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're looking at pulling down strongholds, pulling down strongholds. And the scripture that we are very familiar with is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 to 5. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 to 5. And then we want to look at it more closely in this study by the grace of God. Um, I'll begin to share my screen. Can you see my screen, please? Yes, sir. All right. Great. Okay. Uh, Pastor Yomi, can you start the recording, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 to 6. If you know anybody that should be in this school, so to speak, Please send a message to such a person and let him be part of this meeting. I don't know why God had started us off on this, you know, frequency this year. I know he has something in mind that he wants to do in our lives, in my life and in your life. And therefore, as many people as we can encourage to be part of this school and let them come in and be part of it. No certificate will be awarded, but I'm sure what you will gain here, what you have started gaining, uh, you cannot quantify and you cannot put price to it. It is of eternal value that you can duplicate and multiply in the life of other people by the grace of God. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse three to six. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. If you read it in um, Amplified Translation, it will, you know, see open to us all the Greek meaning in it, but I will not do that tonight because of time. We're moving on. All right. Now, what is, or before that, yeah, what is a stronghold? According to Merriam Webster's dictionary, it is a fortified place, a place of protection, or a place dominated by a particular group or marked by a particular. Characteristics. In the Old Testament, 
A stronghold was a fortified dwelling used as a means of protection from an enemy. We find that David hid from King Saul in wilderness strongholds at Oresh in 1 Samuel 23, 14, and 19. Okay? In the Old Testament, God speaks about how he will destroy strongholds. In Amos chapter 1, verse 7, verse 10, and verse 12. In Hosea chapter 8, verse 14, and Isaiah chapter 23, verse 14. All these were physical strongholds. We can draw metaphorical parallel from them. And I want to declare to you tonight, every fault, every stronghold standing against your life, putting you on a kind of hold that you are not able to advance, the Lord will destroy them completely in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Okay, a stronghold can be a source of protection for us from the devil. In other words, the Lord can use a stronghold as a shield for us. As in the case when the Lord becomes our stronghold as he did for David. May God be your stronghold. Amen. In the day of battle, and in the day that the enemy is looking for you, that they will not see you. Why? Because the Lord would have shielded you away from them. Conversely, a stronghold can be a source of defense for the devil's influence in our lives where demonic or sinful activity is actually defended within our sympathetic thoughts towards evil. These are definitions of stronghold. Now, according to Apostle Paul, he defines strongholds as speculations on lofty things raised up against the knowledge of God. It is any type of thinking that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, thereby giving the devil a secure place of influence in an individual's thought life. That is a stronghold. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 5, is a casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Ed Silvosu, one of the authorities in spiritual warfare, Define stronghold as a mindset impregnated with hopelessness that causes us to accept something that we know is contrary to the will of God. In other words, you know that this one does not stand the mind of God. It is not in line with the purpose of God, but you take it up in your mind, you are obsessed with it. That is a stronghold. It is important that when we speak of strongholds, we're not talking about random thoughts or occasional scenes. We are talking about areas in your life that you are in bondage to and are having a hard time breaking loose from them. That could be a kind of habit or a lifestyle that you are given to. Now we're going to see various types of strongholds. And the last one of Ed Silvoso has given us an insight into it. The first is a personal stronghold. Personal strongholds can stem from anything and can often gradually evolve unnoticeably. In other words, 
the scripture says the um the vine is spoiled by the leopard it can start through the things we see in other words walking through our five senses things that we hear things that we do and which are the foundation upon which the enemy can build walking through our five sense organs what we see what we hear what we are engaged in in terms of activities it may begin with an experience with a kind of hurt or disappointment that makes our heart fertile ground seeds for lies personal strongholds can range from sin from thoughts from feelings from attitudes and behavioral patterns to wrong ideas about ourselves the person of god erroneous interpretations of scriptures prideful thoughts and distorted perception of how god sees us and feels about us when we sin the word of god wants us in ephesians 4 25 to 31 not to give the devil any foothold in our lives common strongholds could include fear resentment bitterness apathy unbelief depression lukewarmness sinful thoughts lust greed drugs alcohol this is just to mention a few and you can begin to extract your life in what way has this one held me captive in what way have i been in bondage to some of the things that are mentioned here take time to you know think over it another type of stronghold is ideological strongholds which concerns world view men such as Karl Marx, Charles Darwin and others particularly affected the philosophies and religious and non-religious views which influence culture and society ideological strongholds are potentially able to affect all cultures ideological strongholds are inspired by the invisible forces and powers of darkness which cause the creation of social creature social structures and institutions to carry out their purposes we all know the influence of karl marx is teaching about communism and that of darwin as well that says that man emanate from ape evolution and that is still being studied today well thank god i know who my father is i know my origin ape is not my i do not evolve from ape i don't know about you <laughs> i know my source is from the almighty job 33 verse 40 verse 4 rather job 33 verse 4 he says the spirit of god has made me the breath of the almighty has given me life how about you did you evolve from a i did not all right now we go to the next one 
occultic stronghold. And I want us to pay attention to this. Occultic strongholds as an overt application of many ideological strongholds. Occultic strongholds are strongholds of witchcraft, satanism, a new age religion, which invites spirits, spirit guides to operate what we call monitoring spirit in another term. They work as power boosters to the territorial spirits that dwell in a geographic region. They work as power boosters to territorial spirits. In other words, they support the territorial strongholds that operate in a community. The territorial spirits over a city or region are greatly empowered by occultic spells, curses, rituals, and fetishes used by witches, warlocks, and satanists. Some manifestations of occultic strongholds include sickness and infirmity without a natural cause. Confusion of mind may be caused by mind control, sleeplessness, sexually explicit dreams on a recurring basis. Here we are talking of, you know, spirit wife, spirit husband, succubus and incubus that assault people in the dream. And this is not what you can say, well, it is in African setting. It's a global thing. The devil is not localized. Evil spirits are not localized. It spreads across board. And I know it by experience that God has given to us as the Lord has graced us to minister a different continent. And we see this happening. And by the time you pray, you see that those struggles are broken. There are communities where you find these strongholds very, very imminent or rife, and you can cut through. But by the time you begin to exercise authority, which is the reason why we're here, we see those strongholds being broken. There are communities that are given to sickness, poverty, delay, and all kinds of affliction that is operating in the environment because of strange altars that have been raised. Now, can you pray with me at this moment? If you can unmute yourself, fine. Perhaps you, there will be no disturbance at the background. Okay? Say with me, Father. 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 In the mighty Father. name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every occultic stronghold. Every occultic stronghold. In my community. In my community. In my, my city. In my city. In my county. In my city. I cancel tonight. I cancel tonight. Every occultic spell. Every occultic spell. Okay. Causes. Causes. Rituals. Rituals. Sacrifices. Sacrifices. By the witches. By the witches and the warlocks and the warlocks and the satanists and the satanists. I suck from my area. I suck from my area. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Amen. Can you go ahead and pray that prayer in one minute? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we come against every occultic stronghold operating in our community. In the name of Jesus, we come against you by the Spirit of the living God. And we declare that you have entered the stop from tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank Lord. you, Father God. In the name of Jesus. We appreciate you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 
Amen. I remember I gave an instance or an example uh, a while ago, I think on this platform, that in a community that we were, we noticed that the youth in that area do not progress. And we had to carry out a spiritual oppression. And the representative of the witches or the wizard or the sorcerers, you know, life was snuffed out of her one day. We didn't ask anybody to die, but we just carried out an operation to liberate the youth of that community. And after her death, the gate that was locked against the youth was opened and they were released into purpose. Well, this is over time now, and God has settled them all over the world, doing exploits for the Lord, prospering in everything that they are doing. And that community has been transformed to the glory of God. As we continue in this kind of prayer, I know we begin to see changes in our community. Amen. Now, the next kind of stronghold is a social stronghold. A social stronghold is the oppression over a city in which social injustice, racism, and poverty with their related problems cause people to believe God does not care about their needs. Now, this stems from occultic strongholds. And now it leads to social strongholds where people are perpetually oppressed. And what should come to them naturally, they beg for it. And they are now used to poverty, to limitation, to you know, all kinds of injustice and affliction. And they believe that God is not looking at their side. <clears throat> when we begin to pray about it, and that is the essence of spiritual mapping. You know, when we map a community, we pray and we have ask God to open it up against injustice and open it up, you know, for the gospel and for light to shine in the community. And we have seen that happen over and over and over. And I believe the reason why, one of the reasons why God is bringing this teaching to us at this time is that we will stand and represent God in our community. If Elijah, a man of like passion, could say, no rain for the space of three years and six months, and we have the same passion of flesh and blood and operating in a better covenant than that of Elijah, then we, we believe God that it will do a greater exploit through us. You can begin to look into situations, you know, <laughs> oh my God, Lord have mercy. It, you, you will cry, you will wonder whether the government even have concern for people like this. Went to a particular community and were bringing social welfare uh, support for them. And they said, we must not do it. You know, the government wants them to remain in that situation. I'm sure Pastor Yomi will remember without mentioning it, the, the country. Very well, sir. Very well. Yeah. The government wants them to remain in poverty, to remain in their situation. And when it is time for election, they just come and give them a dole. And that is it. Once they get their votes, then they just they, they go again. How long? That is part of witchcraft oppression. But when we begin to pray, we see the community liberated and we see justice and everything that they should enjoy come into their uh, community. Now, the next one is territorial. Territorial strongholds. These stem from idols and altars that people have erected to Satan in their communities. How do they do that? Of course, 
The most recent one is raising of statutes. I remember in the city where I live, you know, in Nigeria, you find a particular line where you see different statutes, and these are altars that they have raised, and idols, and people worship from time to time. They service it regularly. Well, some people may consider it as an aesthetic thing, but spiritually, we know it is not. <laughs> One of it that we had to you know, carry out a spiritual oppression was at the secretariat where civil servants come. What do they put there? It was, you know, a farmer working with <laughs> cutlass and hoe. What is that? That's poverty. But by the grace of God, when we prayed against it, all right, there was a change. Now there is something better in front of the secretariat today. And some different altars that we have to pray against and see a change in the community. Altars that are raised, you know, to, to the dead and you know, to, to, to all the um, to deities and people worship them. They have time and they celebrate before all those, you know, uh, altars. You won't see it, but they have their representative that they send to um, service the altar. Now that brings us to the issue of altars at this point. What is an altar? An altar is a gateway between the realm of the spirit and the art realm that grants unhindered access to certain spirit beings to find legal expression in the arts. An altar is a landing or access spot for spirits in the earthly realm. All the altars that have been raised, legally, these spirits are not permitted to operate here, but we bring them by the various altars that people raise. And I'm talking of strange altars that have been raised all over the place. But by the altar of God, we're pulling down those strange altars in the name of Jesus. It starts from the family, you know, to the community, and then to the nation as a whole. An altar is sacred, and it's only an altar because of the presence of sacrifice it carries. So where there is an altar, there is a sacrifice. It is the sacrifice that serves the altar. The sacrifice empowers the altar. So we can define an altar as a sacred elevated platform where sacrifices and offerings are offered to gods, to deities or spirits so as to open unseen doors in the realm of the spirit. Take time to read Numbers 22 and 23. You will get more information about that. The case of Balak and Balaam, when he asked that an altar should be raised. An altar are either highways for angelic traffic or demonic traffic in a territory, domain, or throne. Hallelujah. Before I mention this one, the dominion of an altar, can you just say a word in one moment and say wherever they have raised a, raised a strange altar concerning you, concerning your family, let the altar catch fire now. In the name of Jesus, we are can we go ahead and make that declaration concerning me, concerning my family?
Concerning the church of God, Father, I call fire down. Let the altar touch fire. Let it touch fire. Let it touch fire. Let it touch fire. Let it touch fire. In the mighty name of Jesus, every spleen of the church of God, every satan of my life, over my every satanic altar, every satanic altar, satanic assignment, catch fire. I command it in the name of Jesus. Now, now, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for that. Catch fire. In Jesus' name. Amen. I believe this teaching is blessing you. Amen. Yes, amen. The dominion of an altar. Now listen to this. Whoever raises or ministers as a priest at the altar controls the land. <laughs> so that is saying to, to you here, leaders of churches and ministries, wherever you stand to minister, you control it. You control the structure, the organization, and the people. I recall when I was in the teaching service, and one of my colleagues is on the platform tonight, you know, before we retired. When I got my letter from Secretariat and posted to that particular area, I said, Lord, I take the whole of this community as my parish. An altar was raised to God, and God brought transformation to that community through the teaching service. So wherever you are, as a civil servant, as a nurse, as a teacher, as an engineer, wherever position the Lord has put you, you stand there to represent God and you raise an altar with the bloodstained banner of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you pull down every other strange altar. Before I retired from that school, many of my colleagues that weren't born again, they gave their life to Christ, and we started a fellowship. 85% of them that got born again that time are still born again now including the students then and all the others, you know, tertiary institution around that area. Whoever raises or ministers as a priest at the altar controls the land. You are not just there for meal tickets. You control the land, you control the structure, you control the organization and the people. The reason why traditional kings, chiefs, occultics, the mullahs, the marabouts, and satanic prophets wield so much power, influence, and control is because they raise and function at very powerful altar. They raise and function at very powerful altars. They raise and function at very powerful altars. And that is what we ought to do. And stand against every other contrary altar. Raise another altar. Fire for fire. And thus they become the true landlords. Anywhere you are, Raise and function at your altar. Now look at this. As soon as God entered into a covenant with Abraham, promising him and his offering of springs, the ownership of land of Canaan, Abraham, without much hesitation, proceeded to build altars on the land. In Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 8, verses 13 to 18, I believe is gentle knowledge informed that and said, I need to raise an altar so that I can be the true landlord of this place and sack every other God that may have been worshiping in this place. I believe God is speaking to somebody here tonight. And by reason of that, he secured the land. 
During his lifetime, Abraham raised three main altars on the land of Canaan. Isaac took over from where his father stopped and built an altar on the same parcel of land, reinforcing it in Genesis 26, verses 23 to 35. Jacob, Isaac's second son, completed the family practice by erecting altars to secure the land by building three main altars. In three generations, seven altars were built, you know, which is a number, a perfect number. Seven is a perfect number. So in three generations, we have seven altars, a perfect number signifying that Canaan's land was eternally secured for Abraham's children, the Israelites. Hallelujah. Now we need to look at the functions of altar. When functional altars, shrines, or groves are built on the land, several spiritual things are set into motion within the vicinity. Number one, an altar is a place of sacrifice and offerings to the gods of your covenant. That's the territorial spirit. Number two, an altar is a place of contact with the spirit world. It is a place of trafficking of either angels or evil spirit. You will recall the case of Jacob when he put a stone as a pillow and there was a visitation. Angels descending and ascending. So that is the place of an altar. An altar is a place of servicing of covenants. You know, we have just concluded the teaching of covenants. And so when you raise an altar to the Lord, you service it regularly. And you have been told what to do to service the altar, to service, you know, your covenant with the Lord in the altar that you have raised. An altar is a functional, a functional altar activates ancestral covenant and steers up the oppression of community and territorial spirits. A functional altar activates co ancestral covenants and steers up the oppression of community and territorial spirits. That is why, you know, every year you will find people coming together for a festival. What are they doing? They are servicing the altar by calling on the spirits and they don't joke with it. They have the priest that service those altars regularly. Number five, an altar is a place of invocation, a place where you can call up your God or deity into manifestation. Hallelujah. It's a place where you can place demand on the God that you serve to manifest. Number six, mountain, eel, or elevated platform altars called high places as spiritual transmission stations. <laughs> and that's why Balaam asked Balak to get seven mountains for him where he will make sacrifice to curse the children of Israel, but they could not be cursed. Costless curse shall not come. That's what the scripture says. So it's a place to transmit spiritual power, signal, and information far and wide. Tonight, every communication line on the mountain, on the hill, elevated against you are canceled in the name of Jesus Christ. We break their signal. Amen. But the spirit of the living God, we 
we Amen. break their power base Amen. in the name of the Amen. Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we declare that it will not function Amen. in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. 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 Altars are entry points, gateways of spirits to the earth. So there are gateways that you can shut. I told us when we started the teaching on the covenants that three concepts a believer must study. The concept of the covenant, the concept of gates, and the concept of altars. And these are very, very significant that we must not, you know, take it with levity. That's why we're bringing this teaching to us so that we can search our life. I like number eight. An altar is a place to drop power and strength. Who? Hallelujah. Amen. When you raise an altar before the Lord, is a place, you know, to drop power and strength. The Bible said they go from strength to strength as many as appear in Zion before God. So there is an exchange of strength. Hallelujah. Amen. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. I feel like praying at this moment. You know, can you talk to the Lord that I raise an altar to draw power and strength? A kepo I feel like praying. Nike poraka sakataya, maraka sakuro mo shekete yedi. E praga saya. I draw new power. I draw new strength from the altar, from this altar. I draw new power. I draw new strength from this altar. I draw new power. I draw new strength from this altar to operate in the dimension that God has positioned me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. From this altar, I draw power, revelation power. I draw strength, revelation strength. In the name of Jesus, my spirit man receives strength, receive power. My spirit man receives strength, receive power. My spirit man receives strength, receive power. Moka pakataya. I draw, I draw in the name of Jesus. Mambreke supragatayati. Ligorobo shata. Functions of an altar. Number 10. Evil altars Amen. are major hindrances to community. Evil altars are major hindrances to family. Mm. Evil altars are major hindrances to personal development and breakthrough. Mm. You are going to cry to the Lord. Every evil altar raised in my community, raised against my community, raised against my family, raised against my personal development and breakthrough. Break down in the name of Jesus. Is somebody praying? Every evil altar. Yes, Lord. Are you praying? Every evil altar make pokote ye raised against progress in my community, against my family, against personal development, against breakthrough. Break down in the name of Jesus. Every Hallelujah. Oh, that much is in Leke pokatayato, mareka pokatayato. Thank you for every day for the rich. Every day for the rich. We pray. Every day for the rich. Amen. Amen. Functions of an altar number ten. Altars and launching pads for many spiritual operations and attacks. 
Many people are attacked in their dream. It is because of an altar. Many people are attacked, you know, in their businesses. It is because of an, a strange altar that have been raised. <laughs> Many marriages are going through turmoil. It is because of a strange altar. I know a particular denomination. If they want to separate husband and wife, they will take, you know, a, an, a candle in human form, male and female, and turn the back to each other and make some invocation, and then that family will break. There are some that they just need to mention some things at their prayer altar. And they begin to make some terrible invocation. Except God has raised a contrary power, a counter power. That is when their power will fail. Hmm. And that's why you must not joke with your spiritual life. That's why you must not joke with this kind of prayers. I mean, this kind of teaching. So that you can apply it personally after leaving this place. Altars are launching parts. It's like, you know, I was just speaking this afternoon. After the session I had, I had a conference over the weekend. I was talking about fire on the altar. And it seems to me, even to power, you know, the, the rocket, that goes into the moon, what do they use as the base? Water. Fire. Mm -hmm. Heavy fire. Ah, and I began to say, and I said, no wonder. Jesus Christ said you'll be baptized with Holy Ghost and what? And, what? and fire. So that you can launch. Missiles from your altar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Altars are launching paths for many spiritual oppressions and attacks. Most spiritual attacks we experience are mainly altar sponsored. Most spiritual attacks we experience are mainly altar sponsored. Mm. Pray this prayer with me in a moment. We're rounding off very shortly. Every evil altar, oh. every evil altar that are sponsoring evil things against me, that are sponsoring evil things against, against me, catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Jesus name. Jesus name. Every evil altar. Every evil altar. Go ahead and pray. I Catch fire in the night in the name of Jesus. Catch fire in the Catch fire. Jesus name we pray. Amen. Catch fire. Amen. Amen. Functions of an altar, number 11. We just bring out a few. Closed heavens in nations, in cities and communities, are most times traceable to the presence of evil altars in these areas. There are communities you enter and there is no breakthrough. There are cities you enter and there are no, it is because an altar has been raised. And if you are able to get to the core of it, then the, 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 the place will open. Just like the community I mentioned, the, the, the community was locked against the youth of that, of that area. And by strategic spiritual warfare, we were able to get the key to open it up and the youth were liberated. Many of them have big churches today. Many of them are in the marketplace, they are doing well. 
they did not know the operation behind their libration. <laughs> it was a spiritual libration. They didn't know. Some of them see that they are progressing today. Somebody was responsible standing in the gap. <clears throat> How can I be the, the, the representative of God in a community and then the evil will be, will be thriving? Never. Never. An idolatry will be thriving. Never. One of my friends is going to be with the Lord. In a, in a community where I was living, he noticed that there were brothels there, you know, that service the, 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 the witches. And he went to pray, and a straight fire got that place. It was not built again till tomorrow. Hmm. God has not sent you to that community just for you to have a fine house, and then you have 46 inches uh, plasma, and you are enjoying, and you have a very big refrigerator. It's beyond that. It's to carry out an exercise, like Elisha, that they, that they will know that the man of God is in this community. Hallelujah. That's why you're there. Mm. And you need to sack them from their altar. Amen. And I pray we will go into operations from now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number 12. Wicked, godless, and corrupt leaders and rulers draw their power mainly from evil altars. Mm. Pharaoh is a good example. And some leaders in our country, in Nigeria, Arifato, and other countries in Africa, and even in Europe here, they draw their power from evil altars. And when we have a perfect understanding of this, we know how to pull down those altars so that people can be liberated. Finally, destiny of nations, cities, and individuals are sometimes determined at the altars. My destiny will not be determined at an evil altar. Oh, my destiny. Your destiny, the destiny of your family, the destiny of your children shall not be determined at an evil altar. Pray that prayer as we close the session tonight. My family. Oh, Hallelujah. The of my life, the destiny of my life. parate kalabayadi. Makusa katalabayadi. Inama santoria de gabalate. Bros cambre katalabaria katai. Thank you, Heavenly Father. The destiny of my life. A brother galevos. Candaria da machata. My life will not be. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 I know some of us may have questions. It's just an introduction. Please prepare your question against next week and send it ahead so that we can handle it before we go into the next teaching. Uh, this is just to lay the foundation. And I'm charged in my spirit already. I want to encourage you to go through this teaching. We'll send it to you as usual and process it and I can guarantee you, you begin to see changes in your operations from now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And amen. Over to amen. you, Pastor Yomi. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory be to the Lord. Hallelujah. We want to say a very, very big thank you, Daddy. The Lord will continue to lift you high in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We pray for unction to function. We pray that the Lord will continue to renew your strength. Brethren, let's just stretch forth our hands to our Father and the Lord. 
Let bless him. He has been a blessing to us. Let's bless him or mute yourself. When he was teaching us, he didn't mute himself. If not, none of us will hear what he was saying. So unmute yourself and pray for him. Pray for his ministry. Pray that no altar, oh, from the beat of hell, will stand against what the Lord wants to do. Or you to achieve in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray to our Father and the Lord. Father, we commit our daddy into thy hand. That no evil altar, oh, we have opportunity in any way. We thank you for what he did. Thank you, my Father, for his ministry, for his wife, for his life. Oh, Lord, God Almighty, for all the mission field that you have committed in your hand, oh, God. For the wife and the children. Well, in that, thank you. Hey, that means in the most part of the world. Thank you, Lord, God Almighty. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you, Baba. We what he did, what he did. Please, brethren, Daddy has said that we should prepare our question against next week. I will beg you to please send it across to Pastor Wally, myself, or even to Daddy himself. And definitely we will deal with that before we go into uh this teaching for the day hallelujah hallelujah we are we are almost there we are landing up just give me a few minutes for just a quick announcement amen what we are starting the new topic or the new thing for those that are just coming is pulling down the strongholds pulling down the stronghold and as daddy has promised we are going to make this teaching available to you but it's not for you to keep it it's for you to go back and look at those teachings and you yourself dig deep so that you can have control over your environment, over your vicinity, over where God has placed you in the mighty name of Jesus. God called you to have dominion, and that is what you should have, you should have, and you should be. You should have dominion wherever God placed you in the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, I want to encourage us to give bountifully to the Lord as we uh, uh, come to almost come to the end of the service. If you want to give towards the project, as I have announced, you can give to the our account in Nigeria, please. There are two accounts that we are giving in Nigeria. One is a building project. The first one, the first bank account, two zero three five nine three six one six five, is mainly for the building project. If you want to give as a result of this teaching, and you want to bless the man of God, you want to bless the altar of God, and that is the the first bank account, the second one, you can give anything, either the love offering, the blessings offering, the special offering, the offering for the day is up to you. You can use that account to do that. If you are in United States, our account is there. It Wells Fargo, account number 3524 three three five three five seven and that is for building that is for anything that you want to give to OM as well in united kingdom this is our account number and you know that there's a law in this land please if this you're given is towards the building project please mark it so so that we can divert that gift that money in appropriately so that there will not be any issues that I give into a special project, but now they are using it for something. Else. And if it's for mission, just mark it as mission, and then we'll be able to do that appropriately appropriately as well the lord bless us the lord honor our gift the lord honor our life in the mighty name of jesus amen 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 shortly before we go you know that we are in the passion week and yet as a church we have our grace conference coming up uh, starting on friday grace conference starting on friday let me just quickly display. yes there you go grace conference easter conference coming on friday the resurrection live our ministry will be dr tunde ajala on friday we will be live on zoom and our facebook because the the administration will be from nigeria so we connect with our mother parish with the headquarters in nigeria to be able to go live and you can see this that will be friday saturday and sunday we will come back onto our zoom and facebook in the evening at four o'clock where our father in the lord what a glorious day is going to be to lead us in rivers of deliverance and healing rhoda and the rhoda that is coincide with resurrection you know that god is in his 
is is about to do something good, something wonderful, something is about to happen in your life, and I pray that it will happen, and you will not miss your blessing, you will not miss your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Let somebody shout a loud hallelujah. 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 Any more announcement as we are bringing the meeting to a close? No, sir. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not sure if Pastor Wale is able to talk. Pastor Wale, is there anything, any other announcement? No, sir. Thank you, sir. Fantastic. All right. Can we just quickly share the grace in fellowship? May the grace, and the grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Christ, Jesus Christ, the, the love of God, 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 and the spirit fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit. Be with us now, now, and forevermore. Amen. 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 Surely, 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 Boa noite. Boa noite. Boa tarde. Boa tarde. Boa tarde. Thank you. Muito Thank obrigado. You. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Amen. See you next week. Thank you, sir. Don't forget to Thank send you. in your questions. Don't send them. Don't forget to send in your testimony. We want to know how God has been helping you through this teaching. God bless you. And Thank you, Reverend. You. Thank you, Reverend Yomi. God bless you, sir. Amen. Thank you, sir. <laughs> see you. I can Hallelujah. see the glory of God upon you. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. All right. Hallelujah. Everybody.